All right, we are back to say hi to hybrid teaching. This is session two, which is software details, where we look at a piece of software and start digging into what it can really do for us. This is WebEx video two. This is mostly centered around WebEx permissions for teachers. So at this point, you already watched WebEx one or you're already pretty familiar with how WebEx works. So now we're going to dig into some of the intermediate skills that you're going to need to help set up your hybrid teaching class. So let's get started. What we're going to cover in this video is how to adjust permissions in the application and how to adjust different options in the WebEx site. Now, most of these involve what your students will be able to do and what sort of notifications WebEx is going to give to you so that you can run your classroom a little more efficiently. So at this point, you should already know your WebEx room address and call in number. You should already know how to download the chat login user for attendance. You should know how to share your screen with and without sound, and you should know how to record your meetings on the cloud and download them to your computer. And you also at this point should know how to find those files and upload those meeting recordings to eCampus. So let's go ahead and get into it. I already have a WebEx meeting set up. So we're going to use that right here. So now what we're going to do is start covering some of the different places that you can find some permissions that you're going to want to adjust and understand. First, we're going to start with the permissions inside the application. So we're going to start on the left and we're going to go all the way to the right. So the first options are in the main window. Cisco WebEx meetings, you can see you can hide the menu bar. So if you can't see your menu bar, you want to make sure you have that available because we're going to be using all of these buttons up here. First things first, we're going to go to the main uh, to edit and preferences in here. You're going to find audio preferences around chat and participants. When receiving a message, you can receive a sound in your earpiece if there's a chat message that you did not see. Now, if your chat window is open and you can see it, you're not going to get a beep. So if you like it to play the selected sound only if not viewing the chat panel or for the first message in a thread or always, those are your options. Now under participants, it's probably a good idea to understand how the sound effect or sound event works. When the student joins a meeting, leaves a meeting or raises a hand, you can have WebEx make a noise. Raising a hand is good because it lets you know that there's somebody who needs help. However, if a student starts spamming it, it's very annoying because it'll literally go bleep, 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 bleep. So what I did is I went from, I think it begins at alarm one. Yes, which is very long. As you can tell, it's still going right. So, and I changed that down to like ding. There we go. Ding is much shorter and it's less likely to get on your nerves if someone starts hammering it over and over. So next we'll close this. So those are the different uh, noises you can have when certain things happen. So when someone joins a meeting, you can have it make some noise, which you probably don't want anything too long. At least I don't. All right. The next one is participants assign privilege. All right. So we've got assigned privileges. Now over here is a list of all the participants in the WebEx meeting right now. If you select all, you'll get everyone. But if there are more than like nobody in the room right now, but if I had five different people, there would be five different people underneath this list. But by selecting all, it affects everybody at the same time. There's two different tabs, the communicate tab and the participants tab. The communicate tab is all about who they can chat privately with. I always want them to be able to chat privately with me. And if I'm the presenter, that would be the same one. So that's not a big deal. Although I don't always necessarily want them to chat privately with each other. I don't have a problem with it most of the time because they are in high school. And if they want to chat, they've probably got phones and discord and a bunch of other chat programs. So limiting them to this doesn't seem super, you know, problematic. Um, and publicly with everyone, once again, comes down to this means they can chat and everybody can read it. Usually I feel like it's better to err on side on the side of letting them do it first and then curtailing those uh, rights if they make a mistake 
or neat consequences for inappropriate behavior. Next, participants. Participants can now share documents, save documents, or annotate. Annotate is a, a really, really interesting process, um, which I will show you here in a minute. Uh, if they can view or if they can adjust the pages for other documents. And then here's the big one right over here. Control shared applications, web browser, or computer remotely. This is really important. This means that if they'd like, they can click on your page and ask to control your screen. That means they'll be moving your mouse around, clicking on objects on your computer. If you're sharing your screen and not a specific tab, that means they have the control to do anything. They could open up your hard drive. They could sift through test scores, whatever they want. So you've got to be very careful with allowing them that particular privilege, which is participants control shared applications, web browser or computer remotely. That's a big deal. Just make sure you know what you're getting into. They can't forcibly take it over. They'll click that they would like to take over your computer and you have to agree to it every single time. It'll be a separate window that pops up and says, hey, so-and-so would like to use your computer. Would you like them to? Or so-and-so would like to take over your computer. Would you like them to? And that's that. So that's the participants tab. And then finally, we have preferences in the meeting tab up here. So we've got our options. And in our options, this general content sharing and import mode, but really these two tabs don't do much. The big one here is to allow participants to turn on video um, and chat and also take notes. So these generally need to be on so that they can chat and use the notes and transfer files back and forth. So that's all of the settings in here. The next thing we're going to do is go to the actual site. Now, you're going to start at your home and we're going to go down to the preferences tab on the left. Now this is the WebEx site. For us, it's scps.webex.com, but for non-SCPS people, it'll be your just webex.com. You're going to go to uh, your preferences tab and here you can see you've got your personal room, your audio scheduling in general. General is your time zone, which should automatically be set. But for your personal room, you can adjust your room name, your room link, although I really do not suggest you do that. Don't mess with this because it can cause trouble. Um, it's nice that it's already set to your email address. So I would leave it at that. You can adjust your pin. Obviously mine is blacked out, so you can't see it. And this is another really valuable, two valuable options here. Automatic lock. What the lock does is it makes it so people can't come into your room after you lock the room. They'll sit in a lobby, which is a holding area, and it'll notify you that someone's sitting in the lobby. Then you have to manually let them in. That can be really valuable if you aren't going to be in front of your computer and you want to know if someone's going to be like logging in. During fourth quarter of uh, last year during the quarantine, I would leave my WebEx on and then go about other work, maybe even inside the room. And when someone entered the lobby, they didn't get to enter the room right away. I had to manually admit them. This next tab down here, notification, means it sends you an email if someone's in your lobby. So that's also really valuable. For instance, if someone enters your lobby in kind of an odd time and you want to talk to them. Change your recording view is the last tab in the preferences. You can have it so when you actually download the recording, it looks like this with video thumbnails. If it has the active speaker, so mostly the image and then the with share content, just have the speaker in the corner or you can do content only with no speaker recording. So those are all of the preferences that you should be aware of. Let's go back to our meeting real quick. Um, one thing that I didn't do very well in the last video that I'd like to make up for now is show you this more options tab. This allows you to unlock notes so that people can enter in notes and these can be saved after the meeting is completed. And 
we've got our um, unlocked meeting. So right now, like I, my settings have the meeting lock as soon as I start the meeting. That way it's just locked already. But you can set the timer for five minutes, but you can manually unlock it here. So now anybody who jumps into my WebEx meeting will automatically jump right in. So let's review. We have adjusted the sound notifications when someone enters your meeting. We have controlled who your students can chat with. We've allowed and denied students the ability to control shared applications or record meetings. We also controlled the students' ability to share their screen or their files. In the web-based preferences, you can allow them to change your room name and your personal room link, which once again, I do not suggest you do change your link. You can change your name, that's fine. You can just make it whatever you want, but your room link should stay your email address. Um, you can auto lock your room when you start a meeting. You can uh, now get email notifications if someone is sitting in your lobby and waiting to enter, and you can change your recording view. Okay, good, I almost forgot that. So now, congratulations, your room is ready for students uh, and you are ready to move on to WebEx 3, where we'll do uh, some more advanced things about polling and some other advanced chat stuff. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.